Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Chris with Inside the Youth. Thanks for stopping by. The number six Miami Hurricanes have jumped out to a 7-0 record to start their season. A lot of excitement about this team, especially with their offense, leading the nation in total yards per game, second in scoring, and first in passing offense. However, going into this game against Florida State, I know a lot of people are concerned with how the defense has been performing lately particularly in ACC play, which I will dive into and dive into the question, how concerned am I about this defense and what it means moving forward? So I'm going to take a look at the schedule, the opponents, and obviously this big game coming up against Florida State. Before I get into all of that, let's just take a look at the defense and and point out what you guys have already been noticing with this team. And the numbers obviously don't look great. So what I did was I broke down, made this graphic for you guys, and I took out that, that FCS game. So it's three non-conference games Miami's played this year and the three conference games. And as you can see, the numbers are staggering on how different they are. The, the points per game certainly jumps out, only allowing, allowing 10.7 points per game in the non-conference compared to 39 points per game in ACC competition. The yards per play are obviously up as well as the yards. You know, the rushing and passing, everything is up. And then turnover margin. You know, Miami's not winning their turnover margin in those three games as well. And certainly that plays a factor uh, as well as everything else. So with those defensive woes that Miami has been having this season, you know, there's a few things that stand out to me with that. And to answer the question, am I concerned uh, about this defense? And simply put, I am not that concerned about it. And the reason being is because of how good the offense has been playing. And I think sometimes you look at the defense or, or maybe when you're evaluating what's going on the de defense, obviously the defense is not performing as well as the offense. But because the offense has done so well, I don't think that they need the defense to play at this A level that they need that they've been doing, you know, early on in the year for example. I think that if they can just kind of hover around that B level, you know, kind of, you know, if they're that C level, you know, obviously you don't want to bottom out and and have a D game or an F game or anything like that. But I don't think that's what's going to happen with this defense. I, I think the offense is going to continue to play at a very high level. I don't think they're going to be slowed down. I think they're going to continue to play at that A level like they've been playing. Whether it's an A game, A minus, A plus, that's where they've been hovering each and every game the way I see it. And I don't think that's going to slow down as long as Cam Ward is there and as long as his offensive weapons are all still there. And again, I just don't see it slowing down defensively. The Another reason why I'm not concerned or as concerned as you might think is because I do still believe in the defensive line and the veteran leadership that they have at each position group. Now, for Miami's defense, yes, they do need to play better. I That's another thing. I do not think that they're going to continue just to give up 39 points per game every ACC game that they step foot on the field against the rest of the season. If that happens, it's going to be very hard to, to escape with the win every time. I get that. But I don't think that's what we're going to see based on some of the, the things I'm going to talk about here. Defensive line, I think, is still the strength of the defense, and I think they can provide more. I think when you're looking at this defense, I think you've got to lean on those those guys that are your best players. And we're talking about Reuben Bain in particular. He's coming back from injury. I thought he showed good signs against Louisville. I'm expecting a big second half from him. I, I think the pressures are going to be there, not just the pressures, but I think he's going to finish off and, and make plays. You know, tackles for loss, sacks. You know, I think he could affect the, the turnovers as well, whether it's getting to the quarterback, maybe a hard hit, whatever it might be. I think Reuben Bain is in store for a big second and half and they need him to play like the ACC defensive player of the year candidate he was going into the season before the injury and I think he's certainly capable of doing that so as as bleak as it's looked in these last three games I think things are going to get better moving forward because of a guy like Reuben Bain also too on the defensive line you've got guys playing well Simeon Barrow is playing good consistent football week in and week out so once you have him I still think Akeem Mesador can play a little bit better there's been times where he has looked good but again with, with those guys you know mix in CJ Clark and, and the other guys they have a defensive tackle in addition to getting Tyler Barron back involved making big plays like he was earlier in the year which again I think he's capable of doing. If you don't think that these guys are capable of playing a little bit better, making more plays, then yes, I understand the concern. But 
for me, particularly with the defensive line, those guys are able to be out there. Elijah Alston is the guy to kind of pay attention to when he's available and able to be out there and make plays. And again, it has to do with those guys being proven guys already this season, but also throughout their careers. And that's the reason to be excited or at least encouraged with this defense. Once again, this defense does not have to play at an A level to win games. That That's the bottom line and because of how well the offense is doing. And again, it just has to be a slight improvement, get a little bit better. And there have been moments too. You know, I thought the game against Cal when they got those stops in the fourth quarter, I think that was a good positive moment, you know, to be encouraged by the defense there. I thought against Louisville, look, it's not where they want to be in terms of yards per play, which I'll break down in a little bit even further. But they entered that game with 6.6 yards per play allowed in conference play, which ranked last in the in the conference going into it there in ACC games. They averaged 6.2, and I know it's this only a slight improvement, but they're not last anymore. They definitely want to be under six, and the best teams in the conference are under five, so they still have room to grow there and, and get better you know, with that yards per play metric. But again, I, I think they've got capabilities of, of playing better. And then also, too, that back seven, the secondary. I came into the season not with high hopes for them, but I think you've got to lean on those those veteran guys. There's two guys in particular. I think Mish Powell and Daryl Porter. Those are the two guys in the secondary that have to lead the way and, and make plays and, and be steady forces back there. And then at linebacker, Francisco Maui Noah. Again, what I said with the defensive line, I believe he can play better. And, and I think he's going to play better here down the stretch. And then Wesley Bassaint, we've seen flashes from him throughout this year too. And, and again, I just think that these guys can play a little bit better like we saw earlier in the year against the, the opponents they have in the rest of the season. So let's take a look at Miami's opponents the rest of the season. And this is where I think you should find a little bit more encouragement because these five teams that Miami has left on its regular season schedule of Florida State, Duke, Georgia Tech, Wake Forest, and Syracuse. And as you see with these numbers, they are not very impressive offenses Miami is going to face. In particular, Florida State and Duke have really struggled. Florida State, for example, you know, they come into the game with a 1 and 6 record. They've not had 300 yards of total offense in a game. They've not scored more than 21 points in a game. So certainly I think the defense has an opportunity to have one of those really good games to feel good about themselves in a rivalry game at home at night and really kind of set the tone for the for the rest of the schedule. You look at Duke's metrics as well. They're not very impressive. And and really Wake Forest and Syracuse, you know, maybe if you're a little bit worried about Syracuse, that last game of the regular season, if it's kind of already starting to make you think about that 2017 Pittsburgh game. But but Syracuse, even though that game's going to be on the road, they are able to throw the ball with Kyle McCord there. But as you can see, the, the points per game and conference play and, and the yards per game aren't overly impressive. So, again, I think these offenses, you know, they're not overly impressive with what they've done so far. You know, Georgia Tech... They're, they're a little bit of a tricky team, and maybe that's the game that you're looking at is a little bit worrisome because of their quarterback situation, depending on how that's going to look. It is going to be a road game. You know, I think they're going to be fine down the stretch. I think they are going to be able to get into the ACC championship game, and then we'll definitely be able to look at the eight games in the conference and really break it down how the defense is playing at that point. You know, when they go into that game, whether it's against Clemson, SMU, or whoever it might be, if Miami does indeed get there in the ACC championship game. Going back to yards per play for the defense, which I believe is going to be a big stat to pay attention to for this team, particularly these next two games against Florida State and Duke, who have not had great offensive performances yet this year in conference play. In Miami, in all of the games that they've played this year, they rank fifth in the ACC in yards per play allowed at 5.1. So again, it's not just been you know, the, the entirety of the season. They've not played good defense. It's just been these last few games. Going back to Miami's schedule and their opponents, they've got Florida State coming up and then Duke. Then they go at Georgia Tech. Another bye week. It's one of those seasons where they've got two bye weeks built into the season. A bye week to kind of get ready for those last two games, the home game, the home finale against Wake Forest, and then that game at, right after Thanksgiving when they go at Syracuse. To me, I, again, those two road opponents are, are the ones that maybe kind of, if you're worried about an opponent, those are the two games I, I think you're, you, you'll be the most concerned with. So keep your eye on Georgia Tech, how they're playing. I, I'm always big on not just like looking ahead to who they're going to play, but how a team looks, you know, the week that you're playing them. So pay attention these next few weeks 
to how Georgia Tech's doing, and then just keep your eye on Syracuse if they're going to be able to continue to pass the ball, have good success there. And then maybe also when I talked about the passing offense going well for Syracuse, if they translate that into more points and more total yards, more production as a total offense uh, as opposed to just how they're passing the ball. So that's something to pay attention there. And then with Florida State, certainly they're having a really rough year, really tough season coming into this game on another three-game losing streak. Never good in a season if you have two three-game losing streaks, and that's where they're at right now. One and six going into the Miami game. Got off to that bad start against Georgia Tech to start off the season and just have not been able to get back on track, get on track, particularly on offense. Again, total yards have not hit that 300-yard mark yet, and they have not scored more than 21 points in a game yet. So obviously they're looking to to get right against Miami and, and somehow salvage their season and try to disrupt Miami's season. This is what you see in rivalry games. And, you know, I was I looked at a statistic for, for teams in this series because you hear this all the time about, you know, how does how does a team do, you know, throw out the records, everything like that. You know, that kind of stuff doesn't matter. And so I looked at the spreads with this, with this series. And going back to 1997, the stats that I saw that were provided – Teams in this series that are 14-point favorites or more are actually just two and four against the spread. So even when you know teams have come in, you know, better than their opponent, expected to to blow out a team in this series, they've not always fared well. The two and four mark. Now, I do think Miami is going to clear that. I think they're going to make that mark three and four. But just something to pay attention to with with this game that maybe it will be a little bit closer because again, as I mentioned with Miami's opponents, the other ones they faced. Definitely all hands on deck, and they're going to try to do everything, you know, to, to disrupt Miami's season. However, the, the one thing I think that doesn't get talked about enough is Miami's rolling. They've got a lot to lose as well. So they're going to come into this game with a lot on their mind, too, and they want to play really well. It's not just the team that is trying to pull off the upset. The team that's better wants to really keep things rolling, and that's how I see Miami going into this game. I think they're going to be just fine. I think they are going to win in a blowout, clear that 21-point mark, and I think they're going to move to 8-0. So with this game, in case you haven't heard yet, Miami's going to be wearing all-black uniforms. I did a video on the channel using College Football 25 to show those uniforms in action there. You know, in one of the comments somebody asked was, oh, I wish they could wear orange helmets instead of the black ones, maybe that Halloween theme. And Miami has wore orange helmets before. In 2014, their last year with Nike, they actually wore them a, quite a, a few times there. But the last one, they actually wore those orange helmets with those smoke uniforms, you know, the, the jerseys and pants. So... Because somebody asked about it, I was curious, and so I pulled up something, I put something together that if Miami had orange helmets with those black uniforms, here's what they'd look like. I can't say I'm a fan of it. It looks completely odd, but but it's definitely unique, you know, and Miami's had the green helmets before, and they've done different things, but this is what it would look like with the orange helmets. What do you think of them? Do you want to see Miami bring back these orange helmets? you know, and kind of do something a little bit different that we haven't seen uh, very often at all as Miami almost always goes with those white helmets. But definitely drop in the comments below. Let me know what you think of the uniforms. But most importantly, are you concerned about this defense? I've seen the comments. I've seen some of them. How concerned are you? Or what has you most concerned about the defense? Is that they're going to keep giving up points? Is it because you don't think the offense is going to be able to withstand and keep this up, essentially? That they're going to keep scoring points? So maybe it's a little bit of both. Or maybe you're just looking at this team that you just don't want to waste any moment with this high-powered offense, with Cam Ward's individual season he's putting together, with all the offensive weapons that they have. Maybe you're really concerned and, and you don't want to let anything slip. But again, I think Miami's going to be fine in the five regular season games. I think they're going to play in that ACC championship game. And then as it gets closer, certainly be able to break that down even more, especially when you look at the opponents. If it's going to be Clemson or SMU, maybe Pitt gets in there we we'll definitely have to wait and see how everything shakes out but definitely drop in the comments below i love hearing what you guys have to say and thanks for your support and watching this video all the way to the end you're definitely a diehard fan in doing that and again i expect miami to, to come out of the florida state game rolling you know i expect them to have a big win so thanks again for watching have a good rest of the day enjoy the game have a good rest of the weekend as well and take care <laughs>